Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. The topic of this video is amateur car aero modification is easy. People just don't seem to believe that. So let's take a look at why that is the case. So the other day I put up on my YouTube channel uh, a question. Why don't more people aero modify their car? And I got a lot of comments and the comments can be summarized like this. People said it's difficult, it's expensive, it's complicated. They also said there are no measuring instruments available. So how do you even know what you're doing? Other people said it won't make any difference unless you're going really, really fast. And then finally, people said it will attract the attention of the police or other legal authorities. Now, they all sound reasonable on the surface, but they're all absolutely wrong. Wrong. Absolute balderdash. Now, let's take a look at why each of those is actually wrong. The first one is that people say, and they think quite genuinely, I think, that aero modification is difficult, but it's not. Look, I, I've written books on car electronics and electronic systems. I've written books on car suspension. I've got 40 years of experience of modifying my own cars electronically in terms of suspension, but also in terms of aerodynamics. And let me tell you, aerodynamics is a lot easier than car suspension. Car suspension is incredibly complicated and vastly easier than things like engine management, programmable engine management, tuning programmable management. Aero is just so easy in comparison to those two. But you've really got to know some basic ideas. Look, if you're electrically modifying your car, you've got to know something about volts and ohms and amps and things of that sort. If you're tuning the engine management, you've got to know something about ignition timing and air fuel ratios. It's exactly the same with aero. You need to know some basic ideas before you can start making sense of what you're doing. But there's only two or three or four basic ideas. With suspension, there's about 12 that you have to understand. So know some basic ideas about aero is the starting point. The next step is to measure things to actually measure pressures and measure flows on the car you're modifying. If you don't measure things, you're working in the dark, you end up copying what other people are, are doing, uh, even copying all their mistakes. You end up using rules of thumb. Neither of those is a good approach because almost every car is slightly different in the way its aerodynamics behave. So know some basic ideas, measure things, not guess, and then test mock-ups. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're talking about a front splitter. Just make one out of plywood, make one out of plastic, and then test by measuring how well it works. Test it on the road or track. Now, when I talk about testing, some people think that means racing around a track at top speed, looking at lap times. But in fact, nearly all aerodynamic testing can be done at about 35 miles an hour just by driving down the road or driving down the track quite slowly, but measuring things, measuring pressures, measuring flows, so you can see how well those aerodynamic changes are actually working. Don't use rules of thumb where you just say, oh, well, in that case, that splitter should be, you know, 10 centimeters off the ground. Don't, don't use those sorts of things because they're very often wrong. Don't use guesswork because self-evidently that like, is likely to be wrong and don't copy others because lots of other people make big mistakes and why would you want to copy them? So it's not difficult if you take those three ideas and apply them. What about the next one? Aero modifying of your car is expensive. Well, it can be. Look, if, if you select the most expensive off-the-shelf parts, if you select the most expensive carbon fiber parts from brand name manufacturers, yeah, it can be very, very expensive. But you don't actually have to do any of those things unless you choose to. What you do is you select the parts that you know will work based on your testing of mock-ups. In other words, you've tested a mock-up rear spoiler just made of a piece of plywood just a flat plate, you've tested an under tray, you've tested a front splitter, and you think, well, I don't really want bits of plywood on my car. 
what off the shelf is closest to what I have found actually works, and then you go and buy just that. Now, really the only exception to that is a wing, because a wing has to be the proper aerodynamic shape before you can test it. But with a few rules being applied, you can look at a wing and have a pretty good idea of what sort of performance it's likely to give, what sort of drag it's likely to give, and then when you buy that wing, you can then set it up properly in terms of position, in terms of angle of attack. So optimize the parts that you buy through testing, further testing, and lastly, spend the money wisely. If you do some measurements and find that your car has no front lift, why would you try to get rid of that? Why would you try to get rid of the front lift it doesn't have? In other words, you look at what your car is actually doing, you test your car, and then you select the parts that fix the problems your cars have, your car has. Don't just randomly do stuff, in other words. Exactly like with suspension. If your car is understeering, you select suspension parts that will reduce the understeer. If your car is oversteering, reduce the oversteer. If your car has front lift, what can I do to get rid of that front lift? If your car has rear lift, what can I do to get rid of that rear lift? And yes, you can measure whether your car has lift or downforce on the front or the back quite cheaply, something I'm going to cover in a moment. The key thing is to test and not guess, otherwise you will be wasting huge amounts of money potentially. Aero modifying of your car is not complicated. Look, as I said, it's far simpler than suspension. I think suspension is incredibly complex because there are so many interrelating variables. You've got so many things that you've got to be keeping in mind at the same time when you're making a modification. You've got roll steer, you've got um, lateral load transfer, you've got longer, longitudinal load transfer, you've got your grip versus force curves for different tyres. There are just so many things to be keeping in mind. But with aerodynamics, it's really only about three ideas that you've got to be aware of. And modifying your car aerodynamically is usually much cheaper than things like modifying engine management or modifying suspension. Uh, cheap because you can test first, test with mock-ups, and then you select the products that actually are going to work on your car. But as I say, look, it, it sounds unbelievable, but it's true. There are really only three or four basic ideas to understand in aerodynamics, things like attached or separated flow, things like boundary layers, things like pressures aerodynamic pressures. And once you can start measuring these things, it all becomes so easy and simple to understand because it's no longer this invisible idea. It's something you can just see, you can measure, you can look at the flow, you can look at where there's flow separation, you can measure pressures and see what those pressures are. And suddenly it all becomes clear because it becomes visible through measurement, measurement and testing. So talking about testing, People say, oh, you know, aerodynamic measuring equipment so expensive. That's just rubbish. It's far, far cheaper than almost any other area of car modification. I mean, if you're uh, doing engine management tuning, you need an air fuel ratio meter. You also need knock ears so you can listen for detonation, or you need OVD readers so you can see that real time and so on. With aerodynamics, one of the major tests will cost you about 50 cents, and that's using tufting. Tufting will show you where there's separate and attached flow. Tufting will show directions. Tufting will give an indication of pressures, and it costs nothing. Just stick bits of yarn on your car and drive down the road. Of course, you've got to understand what those patterns of uh, tufts are showing you, but the actual cost of the equipment is basically nothing. Sensitive pressure gauges, about $50.00. US on eBay, second-hand magnahelic gauges can measure car aerodynamic pressures very, very effectively. You can see whether your under tray is working. You can see what the right diffuser angle is just by trialing a few different diffuser angles and measuring the actual pressures. A pitot tube, which gives you a reference pressure. I use model aircraft pitot tubes, about $20 US. It's all just so cheap. It's not expensive, it's not difficult, and it's widely available. If you want to measure lift and downforce, you'll need some basic electronics, but it's only three or four passive components and a multimeter. Uh, you know, if you can follow a simple electronic circuit, then you can build a, a device that will allow you to measure lift and downforce. Total cost of that and the sensor you're going to use 
Oh, depending on how you source the sensor, they're widely available as well. Again, 50 US dollars. It's all just so cheap. So spend less than about 100 bucks on test gear. Look, if you, if you don't want to look around for bargains, it might be 200 bucks, but that, that equipment will last you the rest of your life. It can be used on multiple cars, can be used on your buddy's cars. It's, it's, it's not expensive and it's not hard to get. And the key thing is once you start measuring, you can see what is actually going on. And I can't overemphasize that enough because it gets away from guesswork. It gets away from rules of thumb. It gets away from these random changes that you see so many people make when they're making aerodynamic modifications. What about the fact that don't you have to go really fast for it to make any difference? Well, not really. Sure, look, the impact of aerodynamic modification goes up as the square of the speed. So if you double the speed, the force is increased by four times. So yeah, as you go faster, it makes a bigger and bigger difference, a disproportionately bigger difference. But in the real world, a good aerodynamic change, a good aerodynamic change is obvious from about 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. In other words, at normal highway speeds, good aerodynamic modifications can easily be felt. They can be felt in terms of cornering speeds, they can be felt in terms of stability, stability in crosswinds and things of that sort. The idea that you have to have hundreds of kilograms of downforce before you can feel anything is completely and utterly wrong. In fact, uh, on a lightweight car, you can feel 10 or 20 kilograms difference in downforce. And I've done it. I know. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just making that up. That's the result of testing of my own cars, where I've gone from developing lift, to developing downforce, and you can easily feel the difference. So aero works from highway speeds. Uh, but if you're running an amateur track car and you're going a lot faster than highway speeds, you'll feel an even more dramatic difference. But the idea that you have to be going incredibly fast, uh, you know, land speed record to, to feel any difference, is just simply completely wrong. What about this idea? Well, I don't want to attract the attention of police or be illegal in my country or whatever it might be. Now, I don't know the rules and regs for every country in the world, but if you want to avoid the attention of police, work under the car. Make your aerodynamic modifications under the car. Now that has an another enormous advantage because the area you're working on, how many square feet, how many square meters you're working on is so great under the car, even small changes make a major difference to the car aerodynamics. Uh, a, a really good under tray, and when I say a good under tray, I don't mean a tacked on rear diffuser that's about that long and, and really steep. I don't mean anything like that, but a properly designed under tray will reduce drag, improving fuel economy, mileage, and will dramatically change lift characteristics of a car, even to the extent on a good car with a good under tray of giving measurable downforce. All invisible, all under the car. Now, if you live in a country where there are, say, annual inspections and anything like even an under tray would be deemed illegal, then that counts that out for you, and I understand that. But in most countries of the world, uh, under trays are not illegal and they're invisible to the casual observer. Not if you get down on your hands and knees and look under the car, of course, they're visible then. But to a casual policeman or policewoman pulling you over, they will certainly not be visible. So under the car is where it's at. From a point of view of A, aesthetics don't matter. No, I'm not worried about appearance. B, they won't attract legal attention. And C, you're working on such a big area, you can make dramatic difference to car aerodynamics in that way. So, aero modifying of your road or track car is actually pretty easy, easier than many other areas of car modification. It can be quite cheap. Look, it can be very expensive if you buy very expensive bits, but it can certainly be very, very cheap. With testing and development, it's simple. All right, if you're a sort of person who really just wants to modify their car by buying bits off the shelf and sticking it on, don't want to do any de development or test work, well, it's not going to work as well for you. But if you're someone who says, hey, I want to work out how this is working and what I can do to get the best results, it can be very, very cheap. With testing, it can also be very, very simple. The measuring instruments you use are cheap. They're relatively accurate, certainly accurate enough for our use in modifying our cars, and they're widely available. eBay is your friend. 
aerodynamic modifications will make a difference from about 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, certainly at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, you can feel the difference. I don't think you can feel it so well at uh, that slower speed, but they are making a difference, those aero mods, but you can certainly feel it as you go faster. Even if you live in a country with fairly strict speed limits, don't forget that when you're heading into a, a headwind, when you're traveling into a headwind, your actual airspeed is higher. Um, it's, it's higher by the amount of the headwind. When you pass another car coming the other way, there's instantaneous very high wind speeds. And so all of these effects will, will influence aerodynamics. And aero modifications of your car can basically be invisible. You don't have to worry about getting something that looks just perfect on the outside of the car. Just work underneath the car. Plenty of room there, plenty of area, and invisible. Easy. So what's been the biggest issue? Why do so many people believe the ideas that I've been putting forward and showed in that earlier slide? Well, basically, previously, there's been no amateur level materials available to help you. There's been nothing that provides a simple overview of aerodynamic ideas. Uh, a lot of stuff on the web is completely wrong. Uh, all the official textbooks on car aerodynamics are very complex. There's not really, uh, until the book I'm going to get to in a minute, there's not really been one that addresses an amateur level of understanding. And if you don't have that overview of those three or four key ideas, it's very, very hard to get your head around it. Um, a bit like with electrical. If you don't know what ohms and amps and, and, and volts are, it's very, very hard to get your head around it. You've got to get some basic ideas in place before it becomes understandable. And there's been nothing, no resource at all, showing how measurements can be made so you can actually develop the aerodynamic mods. One of the best known uh, books on race car vehicle aerodynamics, the book by Joe Katz, a lovely guy, um, he's got no measurements in there at all. It's all, here's what we found, now you copy it. But you can't copy stuff in many situations because they'll be wrong for your car. I'm talking about actually measuring and developing on the car you're working at, full size. Forget CFD, unless you've got very expensive CFD and very, very detailed CAD models, it's going to be wrong. And worse than that, it's going to be misleading. Forget testing of little models. Um, there's, there's something called the Reynolds number effect, which means that the results you get are almost 100% certain to be wrong, even if your little model is perfect. Test full size on the real car, and then you don't have any of those problems. You don't have any of the problems of poor CAD models, poor CFD, CFD interpretation, or Reynolds numbers effects on little models. If you want to do it, and you want to do it in the way I have described in this video, this is the single book that's available that will show you how to do all those things, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification, and Development. It's not a cheap book. Um, the, the price is largely set by Amazon, uh, based on printing costs, based on distribution costs, and so on. Um, but the first time you make an aerodynamic modification that is effective, you will more than have saved the purchase price of this book. I am absolutely certain. The book's available from Amazon in your country. Thank you.